So what I'm doing today, and by the way, if you can hear the air conditioner going, I'm sorry, but it's 95 degrees outside and I gotta have the air going. I don't have to, but I wanna have the air going in here pretty hot. What I'm doing today is taking the stock air cleaner off, this 2019 Milwaukee 8114, and I'm installing the 606 air cleaner that I had on my 2014 twin can. Alrighty, getting ready to do installation of a 606 air cleaner on this Milwaukee 8 114. This has about 1,500 miles on it on the stock air cleaner, so we're going to see what kind of nastiness is in here. I have not pulled this off, so this will be the first time we're all seeing it together. Nothing like what comes out of the uh, twin cams, the sportsters for that matter. And I'm installing the 606 air cleaner that I had on my 2014 twin cam. Now it does require different, some different components, but some of the components are the same. So we'll be installing that. We'll be installing that uh, 606 on here, and I'm going to uh, go over a couple other things that are common to 606s, um, whether it's a twin cam or a Milwaukee 8. So gotta take this big plastic air box on. Harley didn't used to do the air cleaners this way. They didn't used to feed the hot, oily, nasty oxygen air back into the engine. They didn't used to have these big, restrictive plastic air boxes on it. And they didn't do it to get cheap. They did it because the EPA makes them uh, put that nasty stuff back in. So one thing that people ask about is the support bracket that comes from the factory. You do not need to use a support bracket from us on the M18, M8s because this is the support bracket that comes from the factory, this piece right here. Now, on some M8s, not many, but on some M8s that have uh, certain Screaming Eagle air cleaners, there is no support bracket from the factory and if you are moving to one of our air cleaners that needs a support bracket you'll have to get this little support bracket right here to use in conjunction with the 425 587 606 but that's the support bracket one other thing to mention besides the support bracket is with your 606 kit 
a foam adhesive rubber gasket comes with it. This is not needed unless you are going to be using a cover, like a bobber cover like this, and what you do is you put this rubber gasket on the outside of the filter element right here, and then it gives a cushion surface for the bobber cover to fit up against. I'm not using a bobber cover. I won't be using this rubber gasket. One other thing to note is if you are using the 606 and you uh, are using the factory air cleaner cover, you will need to use the factory support bracket that comes with the factory air cleaner. And you need to read your instructions and on the last page you will see that there's a photo of the bracket and what gets a lot of people confused is that the bracket has an arrow pointing up. When you're installing the factory air cleaner on the 606 you need to use the factory bracket, but not in the factory position. And so you'll notice this arrow in your instructions is pointed down and toward the front of the engine. The external breather system I chose to go with on this is the premium discrete with a catch can. And so Unlike on the twin cams and the sporties, the catch can is going to have a really difficult time fitting right below there. So I may put it right here, or I may put it back here, where I normally put my breather system is way down here underneath the and behind the floorboard. And I may still do that. Um, I went ahead and got the um, catch cam because I thought I wanted to put it on there. But I normally run a filter element rather than uh, a catch can on my twin cams. I do have a catch can on my soft tail, but on my Sportster I have a filter element and on my um, 14 uh, tri-glide and on my 11 tri-glide I ran a filter element but um, I may end up putting this if I don't um, uh, like any of the placements here I really like having it sort of hidden away down here so we're just going to see but I'm going to start out by putting the external breather system up to the throttle body and um, one thing that a customer service asked me to make sure I put in this video was the orientation of the banjo fittings. You see that the hole is smaller on that side and larger on this side and then we have the shoulder washers that go in on either side here like that, okay, and then we have the bolt that goes through that banjo fitting, and we can see that it has a hole right here, hole right here, so there's the hot, oily, oxygen depleted air comes out of the crankcase up through uh, the heads and instead of going back into the intake where it does nothing but take up space and reduce performance and reduce miles per gallon what we're going to do is we're going to take this banjo fitting with the shoulder washers put the bolt through
right like that and then it bolts in like that. One thing that does get asked periodically is since one side of this fitting is larger than the other, you put the shoulder washers in like that. Since one side's larger than the other, which side do you put the bolt through? Um, it doesn't really matter. I personally like to put the bolt through on the larger side. I don't know why. It doesn't make any difference which way it goes, but that's just the way that I do it. So let's go ahead and put some Teflon tape on here and get this thing threaded in. I put a fair amount of Teflon tape on here because it's not only going to hold the bolt in, but it's going to keep oil from migrating down the threads of the head there. And if you notice, Hurley used to use thread locker, but they're using Teflon paste now. That's the factory breather bolt and you can see the Teflon paste that they put on there. I don't like the Teflon paste. It's messy. I have some. I tried it. It works, but it is a little bit messy. You just put these in finger tight to start with. Don't tighten them all the way because you don't know how you're going to route your hoses so you don't know exactly where you want to tighten that down at. And we're going to do the other one real quick. I want to show you one other thing that some people run into. Unfortunately, Harley does not make all, all their... Uh, bikes the same there's some variances and tolerances so this is a two-part back plate for the M8 and I'm just going to mock it up here for a second put these two pieces together okay push this all the way up against the throttle body okay and right here this banjo fitting is right behind the back plate here let's see if I can move the camera around so you can see it this bolt sticks out so far that the back plate will not go flush against the throttle body and so with the shoulder washers that go on either side of the banjo bolt, that makes it stick out further. If you're one of the few where this won't fit, where the back plate won't go flat against the throttle body because this is sticking out too far, what you can do is subtract one or both of the thick shoulder washers and replace it with a flat washer that does not stick out as far. And then that way this bolt will be further closer to the engine and you'll be able to put your uh, back plate on without it being stopped from seating from that. So if you do need to delete the shoulder washers, delete the one uh, that's on the smallest side of the hole. You know, the banjo has a large hole and a small hole. Uh, delete the shoulder washer on the small side of the 
banjo and just use a regular thin flat washer and then this will go in far enough that you won't need to worry. If it While filming the EBS uh, installation on the 606, the audio cut out, so I'm going to do a little bit of voiceover right now explaining the process I went through during the routing of the hoses of the EBS. What I did is I looked at different places to put the catch can and the, or the filter and just went back to the place that I like the best which is right under the floorboard. It's discreet, it's out of the way, uh, nobody really sees it and it's just easier for me. So I ended up routing the hose down under the floorboard. You'll notice that I use silicone. There's a couple little tricks. I use silicone that I sprayed into the into the hose. It makes the hose much easier to put on and off uh, the barbs as you're getting the fitment right. I cut a few times to get the length just exactly right. I use the black tea. It, the kit comes with a black tea and a brass tea. I use the black pra plastic tea just to help it keep more hidden. And instead of using the included hose clamps, I like to use the black zip ties because again, it just is, it does the job and it's just a more discreet installation. So you'll see that uh, I have the hose routed down into the front, away from the exhaust, not near anything hot, and down to the floorboard. And so that's how I ended up routing this. And sorry that the audio cut out. Hopefully this explanation helped a little bit of what you're seeing with no audio there. One of the other tips for those of you who buy the 606 and have your own filter element, this is what the filter element looks like from K&N with those three holes like that. That will not fit the 606. We modify the filter element and elongate each of the holes so that it will fit the Milwaukee 8 because the Milwaukee 8 doesn't have an air cleaner that fits, an air filter element that fits the Outlaw 606 direct bolt pattern. So we just elongate each of these holes so if you are trying to use your own filter element with the 606, you need to elongate each of these holes so that it matches up with the filter element. Now that we have the external breather system set up how we want it, I'm going to go ahead and install the 606 air cleaner. Uh, become familiar with the orientation of things a little bit before you get started. First of all, you have gaskets. You can see that there's a little cutout in the ga gasket made for that protrusion. Put your gasket right there. If you try and put the gasket on the cutout like that, you see that it doesn't work. So make sure that you put, get your gasket set up to go right like that so that it's on the protrusion. One gasket goes on either side of the spacer, okay? So you put a gasket between the throttle body and the spacer, and then between the spacer and the back plate. Another thing to become familiar with is which way the back plate goes on here. You'll notice that the throttle body is not centered between the two cylinders. Here's the center of the throttle body, and here's the center of the space between the two cylinders. So you'll see that this is offset, the hole being offset in this circle. And the, what we did is we did it that way so that when you install the uh, air cleaner on here, it will put the outside of the filter element and the uh, cover of the air cleaner so it looks more centered between the two cylinders. The last thing is always, always, always make sure you use thread locker 
on all fasteners do with the air cleaner. You do not want anything on your air cleaner coming loose. And so use thread locker. I've already put thread locker on our standoffs here. And then the last thing to note is, and see I've already put the filter element. I'm going to be using the seven spoke chrome cover. And see this is all open here. So when it rains, I want to have a rain sock on here. It's not 100% necessary, but I ride through some pretty nasty weather. So I've already put the rain sock on my filter element. And what you want to realize is that this filter element, the holes in the plate here are not, you can't orientate it any way you want. It's oriented so that the number 05, 035 goes toward the back, the canyon goes right here, and you'll see that when we go to put it on, that's the way it goes. If you try and put it on, say like this or like this, it's not going to fit. So let's go ahead and put this puppy together. We take the spacer and remember this goes that way so we put the spacer and a gasket okay I'm just going to set that there and then we take our bolts and put them through here I'm just going to do two to start with actually I'm just going to do for our bolts go through there. I'm going to do one to start with. We put our gasket on this way. It's going to go that way. We put the gasket on here. Okay. So I have my gasket on either side of the spacer and I have my hole through there uh, my thread through there okay and now I'm going to put the other one through get it all lined up Okay, and then the last one. And what you want to do is tighten these down. Tighten them all down. And then we're going to wait a couple minutes because the gaskets, there's a possibility of them relaxing and we want to get a good tight seal on there. So we tighten those down. Okay, and as it says in the instructions, They should be tightened down to 40 to 60 inch pounds, not foot pounds, inch pounds. Okay, so obviously I did not use a torque wrench. I've done hundreds of these and I got thread locker on there and they're nice and snug. And we're going to wait a minute or two and give a chance for. Uh, the gasket to compress and see if there's any extra that we can tighten it down after a couple minutes. It's been a couple minutes. We're going to go ahead and see if we can get any more tightness out of these. Okay, those are on there good. The next step is to take 
the three washers that came with your kit, and the three Allen head fasteners. And we're going to put the filter element, which I already have my filter element uh, covered with the rain sock because I'm using the seven spoke, which you either going to have a uh, rain sock on it or not have a rain sock on it. I choose to have a rain sock on it. I ride in the rain a fair amount, sometimes downpours. So I put that on there and then the uh, seven spoke cover, which you'll see in a minute, goes over it. And you orient these bolts to go, these bolt holes to line up with these, and this fits in this groove here. Now we have thread locker on these. It is, I cannot emphasize how important it is to use thread locker really on any, almost every fastener on the Harley, but certainly on all the air cleaner fasteners. So now we're going to put this, as I mentioned before, with the K&N like that and the 05035 that way. And get it up in that and get a bolt started right here with the washer on it. Needs to have the washer on it. With the washer on it. And let's do the last one. with the washer on it. And the bolt head is big enough to uh, cover those elongated holes, but the washer is just extra security. So we tighten these down. None of them all the way until we get them all sort of snug, because we want to make sure that that filter element is going up on that ledge, and it is. I can feel it. Okay, so let's go through around and snug it up a bit more. And what I like to do on these is tighten them just to the point, you know, if you tighten them too tight, it'll start bending this plate in. So I'm, I like to tighten them right to the point where they just start to give way and start to then I make sure, start to uh, bend this metal a little, not much. Then I know that I got it nice and tight and snug, and it's not going anywhere. And of course, I have thread locker on there. They're not going to back out. So there is my filter element breather system on there. I slip the up. Oh, Part of the deal with this uh, spoked covers, this little black thing that covers up all this metal here so that when you look through the screen, it's black instead of uh, showing all those bolts. Okay, and this needs a, this is the fastener that comes with the seven spoke chrome. Put a little thread locker on here. Okay. Put my fastener through the hole here and through that plastic plate. And then get it up on the filter element and start tightening it down. Now before I get it all the way tight, I want to orient my spokes. So that I have one straight up and down there. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and tighten this down. And when I get it all the way tight, I want this to line up with that one right there. Okay, so that is done.